Hello? Hello? Greetings? Checking out chat. Howdy. Howdy doody. All right. Hello and greetings. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to another uh, exciting uh, dev stream uh, for Conan Exiles. It's that time of the season, Exiles. Uh, we're here to preview what's coming up next. My name's Andy. I'm here joined by Dennis Dalpert, lead designer. Uh, and in the, uh, working the decks in the back is hello. the goblin. <laughs> the goblin, Nicole. <laughs> Very, oh wait, actually, I had your mic muted. Sorry, can you say oh. that again? <laughs> Sorry. Awkward. Hello, I'm in the back over here looking at chat. Thank you, Nicole. So let's see. So you said up the volume. Do you mean mic volume? Are we too soft? I thought we were doing okay, but. Might just be that. Might be the microphone thing with Nicole. There we go, cool. Cool, yeah, so we have an exciting episode for you today. Um, for those of you watching at home, yes, we are going to be previewing chapter three of Age of War. Um, so this is a, uh, this is like a developer live stream showcase. So we're going to be focusing today on uh, talking about the new features, showcasing them, showing off what we can. Um, and then we'll be also ending the stream with some uh, housekeeping notes for the community. Uh, a little giveaway as well, actually. Ooh, stay tuned. Um, and that's about it. We have a jam-packed thing, so we we'll probably won't beat around the bush too much to begin with. Do you have any four words or anything like that, Dennis? I'm just going to mm -hmm. move this over. Sorry to put you on the spot. Really nothing before we just get into it. Cool. So. Let's have at it. Yeah, yeah. so um, let's see. So for the things that we're going to be covering today are, uh, some of you may remember our uh, roadmap for Age of War. Uh, we have, we'll have we be showcasing the PvE Siege uh, out in the open world today, uh, as well as the Tavern System. If you've been following us on social media, you might have seen some little snippets about a barkeep wanting to refill your grog. Uh, so that'll be, that'll be something to cover today. Um, and then, yeah, community stuff. Uh, also, public beta is available. You can play this right now and test it out if you wanted to, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, it's available now. Uh, the public beta is available now, so you can just go find the public beta client on your Steam library, download it now, and give it a shot. Patch notes are available. Please give us your feedback. Let us know what's up. Um, I think that's about it for the intro. Shall we jump into things with the tavern? Or not the tavern, the, uh, the scene. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, switching over. All right. So, music is loud. Okay, let me turn this down even further. Don't know why. Let's see. I'm just going to turn these up. Now, let me know how this sounds. Team, let me about turn this up a little bit too. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. Great. Yes, yeah, so we have new armor as well. So yes, this uh, we're at a location in the Exiled Lands uh, where a new base will be located. Uh, Dennis, can you walk us through what we can expect here? Yeah, for some reason, uh, it doesn't seem like it's spawning. We got all these things set. Oh. Oh. Oh, what there the? it is. Snap. Okay. Yeah, no, here it is. I, cool. I, okay, cool. A few. Totally wrong direction. Yeah. Um, so here we are. Uh, PVE raid. So PVE raid was a really cool thing for us to approach from like a design perspective. Um, in Exiled Lands, we want to add more content and more stuff to do, places to go, things to see. But we don't have a lot of places to do it because we've kind of already established where you can build in the map. So when we were coming up with the narrative for the Age of War and we knew that one thing that we thought would be really cool to do is smash cities yourself because if you're a PvP player, you get to blow stuff up all the time. But hey, if you're playing on a PvE server, you never get the joy. And crumbling castles, and you know, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> especially with your friends. So we wanted to come up with a way to take one of the camps that we already had. So we took an old uh, Dogs of the Desert camp called the Ruins of El Mariah, and we made the Stygians move in. And this is kind of their base camp, right? So... You know, in, in your head, you can imagine that when they're coming out to purge you, that this is effectively where they're coming from, right? So the army that's come in has settled down here. You'll be able to come in, take the fight back to them. 
Um, so we've done a lot of stuff to accommodate this. And one of the things that you might be able to tell is that this is made out of our own building set that like you can use as a player. So we have a system that we built in the back end now that will allow us to go in as, as designers, build buildings out and save them and put them different places in the map. In this chapter and in this release, this is the only building. Um, it's just this large base in this spot on the exiled lands. So we don't currently have one of these bases in Sipta. We would like to put one up and additionally put more of them in different places. Um, but due to the immense effort the team had to make just to get this one to work correctly, uh, you know, we hit time constraints on that. So it's a thing that we'd like to keep expanding upon in the future. Um, so now you can bring all your tools. Uh, if you remember Iskar, the cell sword from uh, rescuing him from the purge, you know, he has the opportunity to sell you some stuff uh, that you can bring here to fight, really namely the explosive jars. Um, we had some other plans to incorporate him that will probably get pushed a little later, and then some more of his inventory will become, become relevant to the purge as well. Um, but for now, he's got explosive jars, and another thing you can get is battering rams. So if I pull my inventory away, the battering ram that the purge brings against you, you can use against the Stygians now as well. Um, I'm excited to finally be able to role play as a uh, demolisher. Yeah. No, no thoughts, head empty, just smash, finally. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, you know, we, we tested it, and, and at first I was like, well, can't, like, it was, in, it was always, like, part of the plan to give this to people, and we thought it wasn't going to fit into our scope, and then we were like, well, let's just try it and see what happens. And there were some inclinations that some things would be too broken to actually be able to, to polish them up and ship it out, but uh, as soon as we put it on, it was, like, 95% done because it had most of the stuff that we needed for the NPCs to use it. And the, the player doesn't require a lot more for this specific activity. So there are some things like, you know, if, if you, uh, if you do some actions, it'll just instantly, uh, put it away. Like sprinting, will put it away. I believe climbing will put it away as well, instead of having an unsheathed animation, but the functionality for the purge is all there. So now if you walk up to building pieces and doors, you can swing your, your, uh, battering ram at them gotcha um there's some balance stuff in this public beta build that's not done so you might see that it's only costing like three stamina to swing it and whenever i hit doors and stuff it's not going to lose durability or much durability i believe um but these are meant to be disposable so like you knock down a door or two with them and then after that you know it it breaks like any other tool would and um uh, yeah, you'll have to bring some of those, bring some explosive jars, some trebuchets, and some friends, and they siege to the uh, to the keep. Yeah. So okay, yeah, and just to just to clarify also, having the battering ram battering ram out automatically snares you like that? Yeah, As if so you're there's, yeah, there's basically just a maximum walk speed whenever that's gotcha. Whenever that's on. So that's all the faster you can go. Yeah. And yeah. like I said, if you sprint, it will put you right into sprint. So cool, yeah. And does that work on player buildings? Uh, yeah, it will work on player buildings. As well, obviously, as, well. as long as like PvP is such as is enabled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and there are some caveats <laughs> here too. Um, <laughs> um, whenever, whenever we do the siege, you'll notice that like the big doors and stuff get knocked down really fast. Uh, we made some special copies of some building pieces to build this specific base, so it wouldn't present more issues than good uh so we don't want it to take a really really long time like pacing is still important this is content that is designed for like max level characters too um so if you're fighting the stygian like the uh, you know level probably like eight nine ten purge then you should be expected to be able to do this the number of friends you need to bring maybe high maybe low really depends on yourself your build your your loadout your skill um, it is doable by a single player if they are, uh, you know, up there in gear and in skill. And we're still working on some pacing stuff as well. So I think whenever you see this on the, on the public build, um, there might be some lulls in combat, but uh, we we want to iron that out a little bit more as well. Um, uh, Cybercat asks, will modders get uh, that copy building tool? Uh, at the moment, no. There is currently the ability to overwrite the existing one, but you can't place new ones in the world. So 
and I believe this is the case. If I'm wrong, I apologize. But I believe you have the ability to make different copies, but you can't place them out as the way, like as this one is placed out. You can just replace it with a different blueprint. Um, let's see. All right. Should we just start slamming some walls? Yeah, okay. Hello. Yeah. Is this thing on? Um, I had a couple questions in chat. They were asking if they can disable the system at all. This particular one doesn't have the ability to be disabled at the moment, I believe. Um, I do know that's going to be a thing people want. Um, it's effectively taking the place of an existing camp. I guess you could overwrite that blueprint in the dev kit, but you couldn't do it on a server setting level. Thank you. Yeah, so it should be able to be modded out, but not server setting turned off. All right. Um, I think we have some friends. Uh, yeah, yeah, we've we've conscripted some helpers to help uh, assist us with the siege of Al Moriah. And uh, looking good, buddy's looking good here. Uh, uh, OG fun commerce or secret world fans may also appreciate uh, uh, the throwback. The throwback, calling it the siege of Al Moriah. Do you understand that reference? Let us know. Yeah, let's let's see in chat actually first. Who knows the reference, and then. I'll get really nerdy on people after that. Can we get a crown temple without? Oh, Jimmy's, Jimmy's here. Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy's here. Jimmy, he of course. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll just get really nerdy uh, in terms of like Conan stuff and Secret World stuff at the same time. It's uh, you know, a little marriage we have happening here. The entire like premise for Howard's Conan universe is that as time passes, Civilizations rise from barbarism into decadence and then crumble under their own, you know, their own hubris, the, uh, the threat of other civilizations or barbarians taking what they have. So our world and the world that Howard wrote is all built on the ruins of past civilizations. So whenever we were looking for a place to put this and we were trying to map out like, okay, if we do the story this way, how do they, how do they travel through the world? If you look at like the Battle Pass tableaus and stuff and we we're like, okay, well, here's a cool place for it. And it happens to be called El Mariah, which, you know, I'm sure very early on, Joel named this camp El Mariah intentionally because we have, oh, well, it was the ruins of El Mariah. In Secret World, there's a city. It's kind of like almost like a hub city in, in Egypt called El Mariah. So now we've taken the ruins of Almoriah, built them back up into civilization, or you could likely consider this decadence as well. And now you can come and smash the building down and send it back to barbarism. <laughs> and then, of course, in the future, it's rebuilt uh, as Almoriah in the secret world. Let's smash some walls. Yeah, let's let's <laughs> smash some foundations and walls, boys. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Thank you so for the history lesson. I, th I think our little homies here are going to start throwing out some some rocks uh, just to show you guys that hitting buildings with rocks is cool. Uh, that was a little bit short, but that's a lot of fun. <laughs> that's, we've got some new fire effects, I think, on the, yeah. on the explosive jars this update. I think that's new for this one. Yeah, and all those all that free treb ammo that you get from the battle pass, you can you can throw it up, you can load it up into there yeah. for the siege as well. So that's exactly what that was uh, leading up to was you know this siege. I know they seemed pretty useless before, but now you'll have a little resource <laughs> now, boost to send you into it if you've been finishing the battle pass. Now, now you understand. So yeah, I mean, this is uh, again the the this this base is built 100% with uh, building pieces that are available to players. This isn't like uh, like an indestructible prefab or anything like that. So everything you see here, uh, you know, apart from those white wagons are indestructible, but like all the buildings themselves, all the building pieces of this castle or keep are behave. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Behave identically to what a player structure uh, yeah. or how, how that would behave. Like would, I, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, like I mentioned before, the only difference is we adjusted some health values. Gotcha, right, yeah. But otherwise, like, yeah, like explosive charge, trebuchets, uh, all work to demolish building pieces. You can scale the walls, uh, assuming they don't have fences anywhere. Yeah, um, anti yeah, anti climb. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a spot where we're seeing some lull where we shouldn't probably... Um, 
but there should basically always be a fight going on as you're as you're you're getting into it. I think that we probably knocked out a lot of the guys with the uh, with the trebuchets there. Yeah, a bunch of suppressive fire to, to kill the guys. But yeah, so yeah. Uh, under normal circumstances, what would be happening here? So like dudes would this. be like it just would, okay, yeah, yeah so I just mean, dudes it, would come, yeah, yeah, exactly. It would it would be this inside the gate and outside, and then as we bust through, you'll see there are some some more guys inside as well. Um, they're actually not terribly tanky, but I do I do have uh, you do I, have like God mode on. I have God mode on, but I also have like. Uh, an iron tier weapon, so that's ah, gotcha. not working in my favor. <laughs> and so, uh, I guess, I guess for those playing at home also and, and, uh, and wanting to like chew on this siege, also, like, what, 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 um, like, what is this tuned for in terms of like difficulty or like what are our expectations of our players or clans who want to tackle this? Pretty much all of our new content. Um, when we're talking about trying to do it for max levels, um, which this this particular thing is for higher level characters. So if you're somewhere between 55 to 60, you're expected to be able to participate. Hmm. Uh, maybe even 50 to 60, really. Um, just depends on your gear level more than anything, because those last five attribute points will have a major impact. But sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, we try to tune everything for for two players. Um, we expect that most things will be like two players playing together with thralls, because that's what most people do. <laughs> So we'll yeah. smash some walls down, get into the next one. And then here, you know, again, we should see more enemies inside. I think we have an issue in today's. Uh, this is not the build that will go out today to everyone else. It's an internal build, so there's another issue on it. Yeah, and again, like uh, as as with anything previewed on today's stream, and also on the public beta test, this is still uh, every, all the footage you see here is still work in progress. Uh, so please, partner or dust if you if you. Uh, if, if we see something that we didn't foresee. Uh, and so uh, another question that also popped up a bunch of times in chat. And so like, because this base is destructible, uh, but this is still like a, like a permanent addition to the map. Uh, what, what, what do we think, like, what are we talking about in terms of like respawn times, for example? Uh, basically when no one's around, it'll come back. So if you're not there, yeah, so like looting um, it or whatever. Yeah, okay, cool. So, because one person in chat was asking, like, oh, like, is it like, are the doors going to respawn? Like, while I'm in the base, like, trying to blow things up, the, the answer is no. So, once, uh, much like qu quantum physics, once it is no longer observable, it then returns. Yeah, I also wanted to show you guys, like, um, we, I just picked up some jars and blew them, blew them up. There's battering rams and stuff littered inside as well. So, if, if you get in the, the front gate, you should be able to get stuff to help you get through the the walls after that as well. Hopefully Dink. we've got our bosses inside. I haven't checked inside this, in this build today. Dink. And so it uh you know, this even though this is a like a player built structure, like there are like oh, no. PvE tier war rewards for, for completing this encounter, yeah? Yeah, um, we kind of looked at this with the mentality of it being like an overworld dungeon more than anything. So once we get to the top, you'll see there's actually a boss in the end, and the boss has uh, some some fancy loot on his loot table mm -hmm. for Exciting. you to pick up as well. Um, yeah. Ooh. Here, uh, as we get into the next floor up, um, there's more dudes. Yeah, there's more men. The Hand of War should be here. So if, if you've been finishing purges, you know at the end there's a, a special boss that comes out. That character is the boss of this floor. And then his boss is the boss of the next floor. <laughs> but I have a feeling we might not see him today. Hmm. All right, we got a question from chat. Um, What's up? So you said that in order for it to respawn, oh, there people is. have to be relatively far enough away from it. Is there any preventive measures for if someone likes the size to just camp inside? Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. Okay, <laughs> got it. Very Thank good. You. It's a the the ever uh, the ever ongoing and escalating arms race against uh, people who want to hurt other people's experiences is again yeah. ongoing so that's what we don't talk about that we time. don't we know it's a thing yeah we're, yeah we're aware uh yeah so that that's the boss uh we didn't get super amazing loot from him this time uh but he also has some treasure that we can bring with us and you know these will, will drop now hundreds of coins um that you can take with you reinvest back into purges or into building your your hoard bigger buying things um one thing that i this is 
almost kind of a segue into taverns. Um, we're going to start to use gold more as like an actual currency. So there will be more stuff that you can interact with to actually buy things from people in the world. Um, it'll start in this update. Again, it's on a smaller scale, but there will be stuff to do with it. And, you know, going forward, just we'll be adjusting the economy of how much of that, you know, you can really obtain and, and spend and things like that. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that was a quick run through here. Like I said, if, if you um, if you're a geared up player, you can get through here really fast. Today, we didn't see the resistance you would normally mm -hmm. see. Um, this is a place the army inhabits, so there will be an army here. <laughs> uh, but in the build that we had to switch to today, um, for a, we had a little bit of a technical issue with our other build. We had to switch to this one. It doesn't have everything that you, you should see on the beta as well. Uh, I have, let's see, what should we do now, Andy? Go straight to the tavern or... Well, let's see. Uh, we can start talking about, yeah, we can move into tavern stuff if we feel it appropriate. Uh, I know there's a couple questions here. We can here. take questions about it. Yeah, yeah, there's a couple questions so. in chat here. We're, we're trying to address what we can here. I mean, uh, we already touched on, like, potential for people trying to build nearby or, like, sitting inside the thing. We'll have something we've considered, and we'll have preventative measures, but we're, we're not going to disclose those uh, here. Um, we didn't change the build radius that was around the camp before. Mm. So if you had a if you had a base built close to this, um, I think we either adjusted it none or very very little. So there should be real no major issues with having a base near the existing building. And um, I believe this content will spawn pretty much no matter what. So if it's close by, you know, it'll still be there to do. Excellent. Uh, yes, excellent new neighbor. I mean, yeah, the Stygians are the Stygian Legion is just like popping up everywhere now. So they they now have actually have a home that you can take the fight to, uh, and the, this the system is really exciting, at least for me personally, because like the the potential of like, I don't know, it's it, the fact that uh, sorry, I'm really excited that we have like a new like overworld like landmark that's been updated. Uh, I'm a big fan of that, and I'm a huge fan of this tech. Uh, I think it's really cool. I hope I'm looking forward to doing more with it. Yeah, we look forward to expanding it as well, so there are more options that we can offer with it. What about a new mount? We'll get to that. New mount? Question mark? We'll get to that. Yes, yes, yes. We'll get sandworms. No. Oh, yeah. Can you use battering rams on PvE C players' doors? You would have to do it during... Like siege hours? Raid hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Right. It's, it follows the same building... Or, sorry, the same damage rules that the the server would normally follow. Sweet. Okay. Um, we'll try to collect some additional questions uh, and then try to cover what we can at the very end. Uh, and of course, like um, we'll have, uh, you know, you can always ask us more questions on the forums. We also have our public beta forums open right now with the build live. You can view the, uh, the patch notes now. I believe, uh, I think we had like a link to it uh, in chat if, uh, one of our lovely folks could post that back up in chat really quick because I don't have the link handy uh, right, at, right at my fingertips. But uh, go there, let us know what you think, or if you have any other questions about what you see here, ask away or play it yourself because it, this is playable right now on uh, public beta. Uh, just make sure you use the public beta client. Sorry, just to correct that PVEC thing. No, on PVP servers, you can use it on other people's doors. PVEC doesn't have building damage. Uh, so it would be useful. Gotcha. Okay, that's what I am. Okay. There's a lot cool. of people panicking, but sorry. Yeah, thank you, Myra. <laughs> um, also, in this base, like, there's more to explore here too. We took the critical and direct path straight to the end. Um, so that coupled with not a lot of enemies attacking us made it really quick. But it'll be a lot more difficult. When yeah, because there's out. and sorry, there's more to sorry. see. Yeah. Sorry to talk over. That's you. okay. Yeah, because I know that like. Uh, uh, I guess it depends on whether or not you want to show off all the little like nooks and crannies here, but I think you you showed off like one little uh, cupboard with like a bunch of explosive jars. So we have we have a whole bunch of like toys and goodies like hidden throughout. Yeah, and there's chests here. Like yeah, this. yeah, to reward you for exploring. So like again, yeah, we just made a beeline for the boss, but you can grab like you can uh, look around and try to try to pick up what you can. And a lot of these ramparts will be manned as well. So like there will be, you know, different uh, archers standing standing by and. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys on the walls to attack you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, 
Shall we go to our? Yeah, yeah. So and then so, yeah, you had you had touched upon the um, like seguing into the tavern system as well. And uh, so, uh, first of all, sorry. Uh, thank you so much to our uh, support helpers for for coming by and manning the trebuchets. Uh, thanks for taking the time out of your day to to come help us with that. Uh, but you you are all free now. Uh, go back to your regularly scheduled duties while we talk about tavern stuff. So uh, what we have here is a base uh, that was built with uh, a combination of new building pieces and existing building pieces that are currently available. Uh, this is an Acer themed, uh, like river town. Uh, yes, sorry, one sec. Yes, Nicole. Sorry, sorry, very quick question. People wanted to, s to see the map where this was located, by the way. The oh, scene. yeah, yeah, so it, it is, thank you. Thank you for, thank you, Nicole. Thank you for that question in chat. So the, there is already an existing a uh, point of interest in the middle of the exiled land simply called the Ruins of Almoraya. And that has been built back up on over. Uh, so where the Ruins of Almoraya used to be is now the, um, the, the, the Stygian Keep. So hopefully you saw that on the map, uh, yeah. where exactly that is. Sorry, my client walked up for a second. No, you're good, you did. So, right there. I forget it's if you touched no on it. No longer ruins. You, sorry, can, can thralls use battering, battering rams or no? No, thralls can't use battering arms right now. I do know that's a thing a lot of people will want, so we might do it eventually. But one thing I think keeps it a lot more dynamic is if the player, if you are required to use the battering ram, then you get this really cool back and forth of like buying little windows of time after having slaughtered a bunch of enemies to hit the door a few times before someone comes back to attack you. So it's kind of like, to me at least, it's a lot more engaging to ha ask you to do it than have someone do it for you. Thank you. Yeah, so this uh, this base was built by uh, one of our uh, like old, just just a, a veteran of Funcom, a veteran of our games. He's the guy that always builds our uh, bases for like you know Triggers. very yeah, yeah yeah like any a lot of the social media updates that you've seen or like in past streams that we've had where we we run around in a pre made base. Uh, basically, one guy in our Oslo studio builds all of this Tor Eigel. So shout outs to him. Um, so yeah, so here we have, uh, we're going to be showing off, uh, some of the new building pieces, uh, as well as, uh, our, our expanded kind of thrall placement system, I guess. Uh, I know, yeah. I know we've, we formerly had some, like initially, I think in last chapter, we had thralls that you could place just by doors and we're expanding up on that system. So there will be archer emplacements, uh, the ability to uh, leave a thrall at your uh, burning oil pot uh, and seat them at your tavern, if you want. Yeah, so uh, now you can see when that giant spawn, oh, sorry, I hit the mic stand. When the giant spawn far away, the archers were actually shooting arrows at it. So whenever they're further away, uh, not like immediately underneath the archers, your archers will actually attack stuff as they try to come to your base. Um, which is a lot cooler than it looked just now. <laughs> uh, but another thing is they, they can be used to, to man these pitch pots. So you can actually have a thrall dump the burning pitch onto certain spots. And this will help a lot with things like defending your base from other players and the purge where you want to create like a, you know, a passageway for them to come through that they're guaranteed to get hit by this. Um, and the archers now won't run away. So that's the biggest thing. Like if, if you had archers placed in your base before using the old system, you would just place them out. And it was kind of like a toss up whether or not they would actually try to use their, their range weapons or if they would try to get in melee and start to hit stuff. Oh, so like, or like try to like path down like ramp and Yeah, or they just run away, get stuck on each other and get all choked up. So we've got this piece here now called an archer post and it looks like a, a little quiver. And you can put this on like you know, crenellated walls. Um, they're like this uh, fence here. Sorry, failing to pull out my building hammer. And uh, the archer will stay at that position, like the doors that, that we put um, we put the guard positions on the doors last update. Um, so it's really another tool or another set of tools that you can use to defend your base and keep things acting the way you want them to. I mentioned it in the last stream too, but this is the kind of way that we want to start to move toward with thralls. So you see them just as less of an inventory item and more of a thing that's present in the world. Um, and that's what we're going to be working toward. So 
once you have someone and you've made a friend, they are a person in the world, not a thing that you just kind of you know, place and forget. You might tell them what to do, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much that for those. And then uh, as far as like what's eligible to be placed at an archer station, is it can it be any thrall or does it have to specifically be an archer thrall? I don't think it needs to be specifically an archer, but I'm not 100% okay. positive. Um, anything that is like a fighter should be placeable there, I believe. Just like with the guards on the doors, any fighter type, not specifically fighter, but, you know, basically we have two, a split between cra crafting thralls and, and fighting thralls. Uh, and any of those that are in the world, like a dancer, uh, you know, fighter, bear, whatever, those guys should be able to man the spot. Wait, did you say bear? Bearer. A bear. I was like, can you have a bear man an archer station? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess we should get into the town now as well. I wish I had a good way to show the pitch pot, but I think that it'll be kind of uh, unpredictable what this what I spawn tries to do. Yeah, I mean they they already exist in chapter two, so I think folks have already had a chance. Or you know, I I imagine most folks have had a chance to try it out if you're doing uh, base defense stuff. But this is just like an automated version of it, right? Like if it detects an enemy. Yeah. Oh, there you go. It actually yeah. poured it out even though, even though it couldn't hit them there. Pouring one out for our dead homies that are stuck in the door. Normally it would pour them out and try to actually hit them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Skeleton arm! Sorry. <laughs> sorry, it was all caps. I had to. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I'm Here sorry. it goes. <laughs> and then just like normal pitch that'll burn over time. Yeah, just like leave the dot on the ground. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I know, so yeah, I saw someone on YouTube asking also, like, yeah, so are the are these archer emplacements, like, they'll just stay there, right? Like, it's essentially like a turret or like a tower almost? Yeah, they will not leave that spot. They'll stand there and fight. Excellent. So yeah, I, I hopefully, I know I saw some excitement for that, and I know I saw in chat, like, some people saying, like, oh, finally, like, some better archer thrall functionality, which I'm also happy for, too, so. Uh, are players damaged by the pitch if it's auto-dropped on you? Since we have god mode, we can 100% tell. Yeah, it's just like normally if someone did it to you. Gotcha. <laughs> so don't stand in boiling pitch. It doesn't hurt a ton right now, but it might get some balance revision on the uh, on the test server. Get some buffs. So yeah, we're going get through some. our base our base that was lately invaded by small skeletal by, invasion. Yeah, just just a minor skeletal invasion. They're just here for a calcium. It's fine. Uh, it actually reminded me one other like super minor thing I want to talk about before we get too far. Um, but we made additional adjustments to the camera. Ooh, that's exciting. The lock on camera. I know not everyone uses it, but uh, for the people that do use it, I'm, you know, we're trying to make it more and more kind of accessible, right? Um, so if I just spawn another skeleton here. Skeleton. Um, so now you can see it's pulled further back, so it's possible to see like the, your feet a bit more, so you have a better idea of where your character is in relation to your enemy. And another cool thing is w right now on live, it's really hard to fight things on inclines. But now if you get really close to something, the camera will kind of tilt up over it. So uh, you, you're kind of looking down on it more. And it's just a lot easier to fight stuff like that. That's awesome. That. That's good. Yeah. And it'll adjust for inclines better as well. So if there's actually, if you're lower than something or something's higher than you, then it's a lot easier to see what you're fighting. Uh, it used to be kind of just like a straight line, like you're here. And the other thing is right in front of you. So whenever you're fighting, you can't really see what's on the other side of your weapon. So now it kind of looks down on top of it. All right. Oh, yeah. Wack is asking, so how, do, how does that work with, like, the bigger enemies? Same as before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot harder to get closer to those points, but test it out. You'll see. <laughs> uh, here's a bell. Ding, ding. See, so yeah, we'll have a, a host of new placeables and building style options that are in the sort of like the, the Aesir veneer, like Nordic theme, mm -hmm. uh, as well as new um, clan emblems uh, and other customization options as well. Uh, more, uh, we're adding a whole bunch of like clan emblem enabled placeables as well with this update, including a tavern sign, which you'll see in just a moment. Yeah. Uh, and this also is a tavern guard armor set, which I think is pretty sweet. Um, I had the Nemedian Archer one on before. I'll just put some more uh, cool stuff on. Oh, let's do this one now because it's super appropriate. Here's the Barkeeper set. Yeah. It's all 
dark and wet because it's rainy, but <laughs> it's more red than it appears, I guess. Okay, now that we've found some cover. Here's our, our clan emblem, uh, you know, tavern bar sign. It's got a, you know, a horn on it for drinking, but you could call it anything you wanted. Technically, the sign is editable. Oh, that's exciting. Uh... <laughs> Oh, yay, it's, it's my trash heap. Now it's Andy's house. It's Andy's house. <laughs> it's way too clean for that. <clears throat> There's not enough junk laying around in every corner. And now we're in the tavern. Uh, is the tavern one bandages? No, but there is one that is bandages. So, looking fresh. Oh, yeah, so healthy. <laughs> I'm so healed and medic and then... Yeah. This I don't is, look like it. I'm definitely not Ace here. I am not. I am not a Nord. I'm. I'm part Yamatai, part whatever. <laughs> this that set was really. Uh, there's we we have a, a set. I, I believe it's in the in the shop that uh, is like medicine tent themed. Stygian like medicine tent essentially. The horny tab. Yeah, not enough. <laughs> uh, not enough of that here either. Oh, hey, look at that. Oh yeah, there's something. Oh yeah. Uh, well, we can touch on that a little bit later too, but yeah, yeah, so one of the, one of the other things that I'm really excited to, uh, talk about, or at least touch on a little bit today is, um, some of you may remember we, uh, had a fan art contest earlier this year, I think it was like April or March, uh, called Mystic Masterpieces, and, uh, one of the, one of, like, the winning, like, prize conditions was that we would have, uh, the winning submissions turned into placeables in-game, uh, and so the, the three winning entries of the contest have been, uh, con turned into free placeables that anyone can learn. Uh, doesn't it's not paywall doesn't cost anything um the 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 tool tips uh need to be updated they currently just say painting uh and uh currently don't have uh, artist attribution uh, and so the paintings themselves will be implemented in this coming update but the uh like proper attribution will be coming in a later update uh now that we're in the tavern let's talk about tavern stuff um so this update is super super exciting for us um you know, a lot of adventures start in a tavern. It's pretty much cliche, right? It's super cliche. Uh, like almost every Dungeons and Dragons campaign that everyone's ever done has started in a tavern. Um, so as we look at the, the longer life of, of Conan and, and what kind of stuff we'd like to do, we'd like to start adding more and more stuff that makes the game world feel alive. And I was talking about that with the archers before, right? Like the archers behave as you would expect them to. Um, the guards have a job, they guard the door. You can assign them to do that. So other things we wanted to do were with other thralls, like crafters and stuff like that. And and one of the things that I really wanted to do or that like we collectively wanted to do was add a place that you could come as like a, a central point for adventure. So. Right now with the tavern, uh, a lot of what you see here is just kind of placed, right? Like you could build something similar to this right now, but there's more stuff going on in the background that you can't really see. The barkeeper is now a new, a new thrall, a new follower that you can get. And whenever you find them, you'll find them in the purge in this update. In the future, there will be more additional sources, but for now, you'll have to complete the purge to un to rescue the barkeeper. The barkeeper becomes your companion, and they teach you how to build a tavern. Uh, they're kind of they have a little dialogue line that's essentially like, "I'm a lot more used behind a bar than I am in a battle." And if you build that tavern and put them behind the bar, patrons will start to come to the bar. So. The people that sit in the bar aren't just your thralls that you've sat out there. We'll now have people coming in from outside that will take seats at tables, have drinks that you can uh, speak with. And um, in this iteration, the biggest thing is that you can hire thralls from the tavern through that. There's a little more as well. If I speak with her here, uh, you can see she has the normal talk and trade. And there's a new one to enlist contacts. So the barkeeper is really like the eyes and ears of the underworld. She knows people and she can help you get those people. So now we have a new menu where you can come and actually, if you've rescued Iskar from a purge, you can hire him to come to your tavern. He'll pop in, take a seat 
and you can interact with his inventory. I think that immediately a lot of people that are into like RPGs and stuff can see the extreme potential in this. Uh, like I, I'm literally giddy with excitement about it yeah, because it's now so cool. we can contextually rescue or find or meet or assist people in the world and bring them into your base. It's the seeds of adventure. Like <laughs> we will now be able to give you things, you know, going forward, we can plan new content that will come back to your base, send you out into the world and then have a reason to return back to the base as well. Um, Someone asks if they work as thralls. These specific characters do not work as thralls, but that's not to say that other ones could not. So Iskar himself uh, will not follow you and fight with you, but that's not an impossibility. All right, one second. We got a couple questions from chat. What's up? Um, also, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I do see your all's questions. Uh, I'm collecting them as I go. Some of them are a little bit uh, off topic, so I'm, I'll try um, asking some more towards the end. Uh, but for the tavern in particular, um, the town that you guys are showing, this one isn't permanent. This is just a build Correct. that was made. So you guys don't have to worry about that. Um, huh? People yes, are confused this, where you're showing off right now. This is this is just something we built to show off the pieces. And yeah, the yeah, and stuff. yeah. Like this isn't some like you this is have, like our private server. We built. We yeah, yeah, this yeah. Tavern. This is all stuff that we built. So like the yeah, like mechanically, kind of the way the tavern, like the bar works, is that it's a it's you place the bar down and you 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 man it with the barkeep, and then from there, uh, thrall or you know p potential patrons will uh, enter like the vicinity and attempt to seat themselves. Uh, based on just whatever you have out. So like, right. you don't have to have like a specific setup, like th there's no tavern building, it will just automatically try to find available seating for for potential NPCs to come in. Uh, in this example here, we do have a bunch of like placed NPCs and thralls. Um, you can in fact, at, at the at the bar itself, there are some slots for people to just sit down there. Uh, we have some people just, uh, you know, hanging out on the floor. That kind of leads <laughs> into the second question actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, um, what's the second question? Uh, someone was asking if you could toggle the barkeeper on and off. So if it's nighttime, you want to have people entering the tavern. Um, I imagine that's for RP purposes, but uh, I would imagine that's up to the server owners and like the people. Like, uh... well, just in normal gameplay, there's not an option. Yeah, like yeah. right oh, now, yeah, yeah, if yeah. you place yeah. the barkeeper. So I mean, what you could do is just take her from behind the bar. Like if she's no longer at the bar, people won't come. That makes sense. Oh yeah, bar's closed. Yeah, exactly. Bar yeah. Yeah, yeah. So bar home. Yeah, bartender's gone home too. And Four a.m. Maybe, maybe in the future, uh, there might be some way to automate that. Yeah, yeah. Can we? Um, is there any way that we could try to like place or like move one of the these folks around to show like what the seating system kind of looks like, or that that we can actually place folks? I can try. I don't know. We'll see if it will do what it's supposed to. Yoink. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, we had we had a build yesterday, and the issue in that one was that all of the chairs were invisible. So can you? Yeah, if you just like yeah stand guard and then just like place them somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So yeah, you can see like the various uh, like. Valid locations that you can place them, just like with the. Oh, uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Sorry, yeah, I'm sorry, so, yeah. I'm sorry I was uh, nondescript about that. Yeah, so yeah, so whenever you have a thrall uh, that you want to place somewhere, those green outlines show you where you can put them, and then yeah, just snap them right in there. And that is the exact system that we're going to start trying to work into, like crafting stations and things like that. So you can say, hey thrall, this is what I'd like you to do. Instead of just go somewhere and do an emote, do this specific thing. Uh, there's a juggling man on the floor. Yeah, we gotta. We just gotta move those. They're, they're again. This is all work in progress stuff. <laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes they go through the floor on server start. Oh, the cat's gone. There was a cat up here before. Do the green outlines also show play? Yeah, yeah. So all those all those locations, I think, are wait. Can can the player sit at the bar like a thrall can? I know all those yeah. other places are just like regular seating. Like it's just regular seating for anyone. So this is like all uh -huh. that stuff is just like. Actually, like this one, you probably can't because this one's designed for them to uh, sit at. Okay, but like gotcha. the individual chairs, I should be able to sit at this one. Yeah, yeah cool. And now I, as a player, will do the same thing that the uh, NPC would do. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Uh, sorry, one sec. We got another question from chat. What's up? Sorry, I keep interrupting. No, you're I, I keep fine. saying questions. Um, someone was wondering if other players can visit and recruit the roles from other people's taverns. I'm not positive what the rules are on that right now, but I think that we made it clan restricted. I don't think that you can go somewhere and hire someone from another clan's tavern. Me. But if it was another player in your clan, theoretically, yes. Sweet. Thank you. There is also... Um, 
No, I guess I won't say that yet. <laughs> there is a chance for very high value thralls to appear in your tavern. They cost more coin, but they bring more value. Mm, that's exciting. Any other questions from Chant or? So yeah, uh, so yeah, yeah, I mean, you can basically with the system, I mean, you can just build as soon as you plop down your tavern bar, like your bar, and just like you just have some tables anywhere, uh, people will potentially start coming in. Uh, at least on this build, like the the hireable or like the 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 auto gen thralls that actually come in or characters, I should say, that come into your pay, uh, come into your bar. Uh, are currently, I think, dressed in, like, regular kind of, like, coarse outfits. Yeah, yeah. Right now, if you see guys that are just wear, they look like exiles, basically, right? Mm -hmm. They just look like regular exiles from early game. Uh, and Tavern works in Sipta, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Because that's just a, yeah, it's, it, mechanically, again, it's just a, it's a, it's a crafting System. station, I guess, technically, that you then man with a barkeep. And so, yeah, this is a, this is an exciting like launch pad again for for things we want to also try to do for the future. Uh, it's it's all very exciting. Um, so let's see. Oh yeah, we need music in the tavern as well. Yeah, actually, one of Isn't our that? stretch goals that we didn't hit was adding some more rabble in here as well. Um, so you know, we we do have plans to expand more on this as well. I think that um, now that we have. This was like an entire thing to build, right? Uh, but we built it in a way that it could easily expand to other things. So now if we wanted to make a stage that people can go up and play instruments on, that's much more simple work for us, right? Uh, things like that are absolutely within the realm of possibility now. You could even be one on the stage playing the instrument. <laughs> Excellent. So, okay, um, let's actually explore some of this base some more also and show off some of the other things that we have coming up in terms of like building sets or other, other fun uh, like sure. options that we'll have uh, that'll be included with the battle pass and the bazaar. And of course, again, yeah, if you have any other questions about the tavern or the Siege of Almorai, please let us know in chat and we'll try to answer what we can. All right. But, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's anywhere you want to guide me to specifically. There is. Well, because I know. Oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The dungeon yeah. stuff. Yeah. So we okay. have. A, um, so coming up. Uh, oh, shit. I forget. Sorry. Pardon my language. I forget off the top of my head whether these are. I'm assuming this is a bizarre set. But yeah, we're, we're uh, expanding upon the. Yeah, um, yes, yeah. yeah, gotcha. Yeah, we're expanding upon the, the, the lost dungeon set, uh, adding uh, additional new options. Uh, for creating the dungeon of your dreams, uh, including uh, more columns, more types of uh, uh, um, imp implements for your friends to play in, uh, and spiral staircases. Yeah, this guy's uh, crying in the gibbet here. Um, yeah, yeah, what's up? So you get the barkeep from the purge, you said? Yeah. Okay, do you know what level purge you possibly need? I don't know what the minimum level is off the top of my head. I'm sorry. That's okay. Can um, you put a tavern inside of this dungeon, theoretically? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, you can put it anywhere. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Uh, so here, again, is another extension of that same system that we're using. Um, you know, so here's the old uh, guard position beside a door mm -hmm. so that person would be a guard we probably need some uh signaling that kind of shows what the the job is right or like mm -hmm. what the action mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. now you see there's a lot of uh potential places to put it and one of them is in, in here so you can put a <laughs> put a thrall in there now similar to the chains before so yeah, you can actually a, take this guy out they're decorative you see yeah and uh, yeah, the spiral stairs, they, they lead to nowhere, but I want to show them because of how cool they are. Yeah, I mean, they technically lead into a room upstairs that's just unfurnished currently. Yeah, yeah. It's just a blank room. Uh, so they, they do take up a fair amount of space, but I know some people it's might be worth. pretty excited about. It's so worth it. Yeah, <laughs> pretty excited about a spiral staircase option finally for your dank dungeons. Those stairs are awesome. Hell yeah. So that'll be something that's added. Uh, I know we have other things that we are adding. I know we're adding a new bear pet, a new oh. cat pet, uh, as well as, an, uh, <clears throat> uh, I know uh, we, we touched upon it briefly. I know some people in chat were like, is there a new mount? Maybe I there think, is. I think this roof piece is new too, right? So. Oh, yeah, yeah, the vaulted ceilings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah there's yeah, vaulted yep. ceilings for it. 
Um, we actually had this in the tavern too. I'll go back and show you guys again too, but we did a similar thing um, in the tavern. Nice. Oops. Wait, so, sorry. One th sorry. This, this comment made me laugh. <laughs> what? Uh, can you make the crying more pathetic and pained? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we need something more authentic here. Let me, we let might me need a some, poker for that. Let me do some VO for it then. I'll, I'll, I'll volunteer as tribute for... <clears throat> anyway, yeah. thank you for the question. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm, yes, I'm contemplating this torture rack. Pretty, yes, it's, very good. It's pretty sad. Uh, all right. Pathetic. Where else? Where else should I go? I think there's a, a mount over or uh, not a mount, sorry, a new uh, pet over here. Mmm. So that's what a pretty stag. Yeah, that's the I think a veneer heart. Yeah. An elk. And then uh we do have, uh, you want to just talk about the mount? Where is it at? Great question. Uh, I will, I think we just have to show some video for it because this build is very silly with when it comes to the camels, but. Well, I left one over here. <laughs> do we dare? Oh, no, no. Yeah. No, okay. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's like, oh. We've, we've got a bug. <laughs> yeah, a little, little bit of an issue with this thing where you're, yeah, so I'm just gonna, we're just gonna show off some of the, the, uh, Couple of the new cosmetics in the mount in a video. Uh, it is really funny though. We might. Re we, I really want to show a video of it like on social media later. But yeah, right now it's just like not a great look. <laughs> um, it. <laughs> it's incredible. Hold on. But yeah, let me let me see if I can fire up this just really quick. Just make sure. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. The camel has not only had too much cactus wine, it is like, their hump is full of cactus wine and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So everyone, yeah, I mean, everyone at this point knows uh, that the new mount is a camel. Um, <laughs> if you don't, here's your introduction. You can ride a camel now. Can yeah, you so punch the camel? You can't, there's no camel punch emote. Uh, you could just, use a regular punch that's an option so you could punch your camel manually um they're balanced to be the same as horses i think that we're probably going to increase their storage size a little bit to kind of you know drive home that they're a pack animal a bit more um so that might be like the slight advantage they have over horses and here's the 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 new bear cub uh, and yes. a little black cat pet one cool thing too if it's not shown in this video uh the, the bear cub is part of the tavern set as well and in the bar for the tavern, there is a little cubby for the bear. Mm. To sleep in. Oh yeah, yeah. There's like a little like <laughs> slot underneath the tavern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's super cute. So, uh, here's uh, sorry. Oh, you go ahead. You got it. Uh, I mean, these are the these are some of the new armor sets that are also coming uh, with the chapter. On the right hand side, we have a Va Vanier Barkeep. So I'm gonna pause this. Vanier, wait. Yeah, Vanier Barkeep on the. Yeah, I can't. Anyway, yeah, Vanier Barkeep, and then. Um, um, all the way on the screen's left is the tavern guard, Vanier Tavern Guard outfit. Uh, and then the middle one, I think, is the, that's a Nabedian Archer set? Mm -hmm. Okay. Nabedian Archer. And on the left side of the screen also is the lookout bell. That's the bell that you can ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's an interactable, and it's just, uh, it just, it, it clanks around and lets people know, oh, there's intruders, watch out. I believe that's currently part of the Nabedian Archer, the set, same set that the Nabedian Archer Oh, cool, Archer okay, cool. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I wasn't 100% sure on the, um, like what, what all is included in like bundles or anything, right? Yeah, that's right like now with this the, update. The theme of that one is like uh, look at Archer Lookout essentially. Gotcha, cool. Thank you. Oh, also, we didn't mention this, but camels are base game. So, oh, that was one of my questions. Yeah, you don't have to pay to have a camel. You can just tame a tamel, uh, camel now. Yeah, and like there'll be like alternate saddles and such that we may have available and like either through the BP or Bazaar. But yeah, the, the base functionality to like have your own camel is for everyone. Like you don't have it's not paywalled or anything like that. Do you know the inventory space for the camel? Uh, it's currently 10 slots, but I think that we're probably going to expand it to be 15 or 20. Sweet. Uh, and so uh, there were a couple questions in chat, actually, going back to the tavern system a little bit. Um, is there... Uh, what? So all types of thralls are like are potentially available through the thrall or through the tavern system? Like, can, can like crafters come in in, ad in addition to fighters? Or like, is there... Can you... Not yet. Yeah. Okay. okay so that that's just... Again, I don't want to get too deep into it because it's not in this actual update. I don't want to confuse anybody. But that's like our long-term plan is that all crafters exist in the world in the same way that fighters do. 
So if you find a, a, a blacksmith or, you know, whatever, whatever craft or cook, like they, they will always be a character that exists in the world and they, when you convert them, they won't become an inventory item. Uh, and stay an inventory item. <laughs> Can bar patrons be romanced? <laughs> <laughs> if only. Yo, yeah, yeah, question from chat. What's up? Um, someone was asking if they can recruit crafter thralls from the tavern, like carpenters. Yeah, yeah, that's kind right. of what we're touching on. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, this is this is precisely what My we're touching idea. on. Because I, yeah, I did see that comment a bunch of times too. Busy yeah, yeah. At chat. yeah, we we thought about making it so you could like hire them and they would just convert into an inventory item right away. But I think that at the end of the day, we decided like the full experience of having them is so close on the horizon that let's not put the time into it. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Bear Cub is part of Tavern set. Tavern is not base game. Tavern is base game, but there is a the skin the the bar that you see here is a skin for the tavern. Uh, there's a different one for the base game as well. Yeah, and I think we'll, we're also planning on having like a Yamatai themed uh, tavern set uh, that will be coming in the uh, bazaar at some at some point as well. Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, it's super cool looking. <laughs> Uh, you can sit down like those like uh, like tatami mats, I think, and like the the floor tables and such too. So it's it's very very quaint. I love it. Quaint in a good way. I know quaint sometimes like has like negative uh, uh, can can be construed as a negative comment, but I, I'm using quaint as like a positive. Like oh, it's cozy. Okay, so uh, we're we're just coming up in the hour, so I did want to move forward just a little bit um, going forward. So uh, again, the. Uh, most of this, so all, all the actual gameplay features are now currently available to be played right now on the public beta uh, that went live this morning, just a few hours before today's stream. Uh, everyone can access it uh, through your Steam library, so it's PC only. Uh, you have to just download the public beta client uh, for Conan Exiles, and then you'll be able to patch it up uh, and then go from there. And then uh, once again, let us know your feedback on the forums, uh, and you can read all the patch notes on our forums as well. Did you want to surf through this at all? Yeah, yeah. Let's take a look at some of uh, some of uh, the the battle pass. I'll show you guys some of the battle pass. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll just click through the tiers real quick, and you can just glance real quick at, at what's there. I'll point out the things that are cool. So there's that in your heart. Thank you, Myra. And uh, again, there's like like Andy said, there's a lot of cool, you know, clan clan emblem supported stuff in this. It's a really mm -hmm. cool one. Yeah, yeah, you can see some of the kegs <laughs> that were placed in our tavern. Uh, yeah, uh, all new emotes, uh, wall sprays, all the stuff that you... Oh, wait, was that the... Uh... All the stuff that you would expect. Okay, that's the drinking one. I, I want to show you guys a specific emote if it's in here. Ooh. And you get a little sneak peek of all the amazing background tableaus our artists create. There's the bar counter. Sorry, that one's part of the battle pass. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Set. Sweet. Oh yeah, that was the one of the cool armor sets that was being worn earlier. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's uh, um, that was uh, adapted from Age of Conan. I believe, yeah, too. This, yeah, yeah. This was an AOC armor set that we uh, translated. What over. class was that? I forget off the top of my head now. I feel I, bad. I think this one was just a generic mage uh, one at that okay. point because it was one of the Tyrannian one. I think it came out around the Tyrann expansion. Oh, the Savage Coast. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. But it's a Pictish set. Uh, mm. If it was for a specific class, it was probably Necromancer. Gotcha. Maybe someone in chat knows. There's the guard armor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A bunch of free oh. treb ammo for that siege. Here we go. Ugh. Oh, yeah, and just like... <laughs> <laughs> just be dead. I need, uh, I need a picture of that inside of a crater. Go for... Go recreate my favorite Yamcha meme. For all you weebs out there, hope you understand that. All right, well that's that. <laughs> Chat destroyed. Thanks, Andy. Anyway, you certainly yeah. don't have to be a ye a weeb to like DBZ. That's though. true. Yeah, I, 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 that I'm, became very mainstream. It, it is very mainstream. I apologize. I shouldn't, but uh, I, I feel like the the. I don't know the the cultural impact of the Yamcha meme is a kind of a more specific targeted <laughs> uh, audience. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so when will this content be playable for us? So. Uh, again, it is available now on public beta, but Chapter 3 is set to officially launch on December 14th. Uh, so we'll have a little little under a month of testing before the official launch. Again, December 14th, 
Uh, but yeah, that's when Chapter 3 will officially launch for everyone, uh, inclu- so uh, both on PC and on consoles, uh, where you can where you can sink your teeth or, or, or put your drinking horn to your lips to to, uh, to tackle all this uh, new content that's coming your way. Just in time for the holidays. Tis the season, baby. Let's go. Uh, quick question. Yeah, yeah. So another quick question. Yeah, What's can up? you just, um, I guess we had some questions. So can you go over what will and what won't be on Zipta? Because there's some confusion there. For this update in general, yeah. Well, the I sorry, I can. I, I think I know the answer to this. I mean, it's the the, the all, all the like the gameplay features. So like the the tavern system, all the new buildables, uh, all that will be uh, available for everyone. The Siege of Almorai is exclusive to Exiled Lands. Yeah. Uh, there's no like analog or counterpart on Sipta. We definitely do want to put a version on, of it on Sipta, but it's a complex feature to implement, so we had to do it. Simply in one place to get it right, and then we can do it in other places later. Okay. Cool. And I, I, I know I also saw some questions about some other things that I know we've talked about in the future. So is this uh, like like things like, ooh, like ooh, fatalities or like anything with the purge and stuff like that? So There's a lot of PvP questions. I was wondering. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did see a bunch of those questions as well. Um, do we have any like... Uh, game player PvP, or uh, maybe maybe saying, oh, PvP specific changes are maybe the best way to to frame that. But do we have any like combat changes or balance changes or anything in that realm that we can expect? Um, I'm trying to remember specifically. Um, so, just for everyone else's uh, information, I suppose I'm working in several different releases at a time so it's hard to remember what is like where everything sometimes else. yeah he, dennis is a busy guy he's managing <laughs> a lot of high level stuff for the game so every where everything kind of falls into with each like release and build is kind of i <laughs> i did just test this um but one thing that we are shipping in this update is we added nine frames to the startup of the spear heavy attack so all of our frames or all of our animations are made in, in 30 fps and those nine frames will extend the time before the hit occurs on a spear heavy. I think that's the biggest PVP, like really oriented change. And it really just made sense for PVE and PVP because before the heavy attack on spear was actually faster than the light attack. (laughs) So now it feels a lot heavier and it'll be harder to put that snare on people that uh, I think a lot of people are frustrated with. Nice. So yeah, yeah, it's actually the slower startup on the attack. Is what yeah. yeah, yeah, gotcha. We've got we've got some other stuff coming too. And again, I, I don't like to talk too much about what's not in this update, but I know a lot of people, pretty much ex- like everyone, wants a fix for roll spam, and we are testing a fix for roll spam internally right now. It will not be in the hot fix. If we have a hot fix after this, it'll be in like whatever the next major update will be. But we know that's a hot topic for a lot of people. So. I just want you to know we're working on it. Cool. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many times it's like, you know, we see a lot of comments come up and like we can't realistically answer like each and every individual combo. But we do see, you know, we do see a lot of these comments and we do what we can. But, you know, it, it also like we don't want to put ourselves in a position where like we're saying we're going to do something, but it isn't working out internally or something like that. Like we don't want to overpromise or anything like that or set expectations and then end up not like, you know, not be able to do it, I guess. Yeah. So. Speaking of overpromising, should we segue into the additional in- seasonal information yeah sure uh, <laughs> that sounds great unless nicole you have anything else you want to ask about uh am i on yeah uh, oh, yes yes i'm oh, yeah, sorry yes fine. no nothing to ask about but i just wanted to also um say again and i say this every stream that we have new content coming but with these new patches are always bug fixes too with it obviously we're not going to go over every single one but they're in there yeah, and a lot of the stuff, yeah, like, uh, uh, you know, the public beta is definitely there to, like, get feedback and, get, and and identify, like, issues or bugs that might pop up. Some bugs take longer to fix than others, so, like, we may not necessarily, like, if it's, like, a really serious issue, yes. we may not be able to, like, guarantee that it'll be resolved by the time it launches, but that kind of stuff usually gets reserved for, like, any, like, uh, hot fixes. Like, you might remember from last chapter, like, we had something that popped up, I think, during the beta, but it was a pretty big issue, so we needed more time to do it, but it did come out, I think, eventually in either Hotfix 1 or Hotfix 2, mm-hmm. not that long after the launch. Um, uh, you know, obviously, we, we in a perfect world, we could just snap our fingers and, like, fix every bug, but that's just not how software development works. So. Yeah. We have a very aggressive release cycle, yeah. and it takes a long time to actually get those through 
to all the platforms that they need to that go too, to. Because of like certification and all that. So there's a yeah. lot of roadblocks and a lot of like red tape to have to go through with that kind of stuff. So we appreciate your patience when it comes to some of the turnaround time and some of the issues that get identified, uh, for lack of a better term. So anyway, I've been I've been talking over you. Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, okay, so this thing, it's a, a pretty big thing to talk about, but I'll start by going back to what someone talked about with overpromising, right? Someone, Me? <laughs> uh, some, yeah, you know, someone brought up, you know, a lot of people in chat are saying like, where are fatalities? Where are alliances? I think that alliances specifically were a probably a case of overpromising. Um, there are a lot of concerns with alliances that I knew about whenever we brought it up to begin with. The more we had time to think about it, the more we decided it was just not worth doing right now in the incarnation that we planned doing it. So we need to go back to the drawing board a little bit with alliances. I still want and need to find a way to get people to be able to play together easier. I think that games are more fun in general when you're playing with other people. And just because you play on a PVP server, you shouldn't be penalized for that. So we would like to find a way to make essentially grouping work without allowing people to overrun servers just by having too many friends. Um, so that I would consider an overpromise in a way because we really weren't 100% sure on the plan when we started it. Fatalities are in the works. Uh, we have fatalities. We have fatalities working. We have many fatalities, the, best fa the biggest fatalities. And they're very, very good fatalities. However, to get that entire system working the way we want it to, we're pushing it back in another release as well. And that brings me to the much larger point that there are currently three chapters in an, in an age. So we have nine months of uh, one kind of concurrent theme and story to drive us through. We're going to be adding a fourth chapter to them. And a lot of that reason is just because like we have more that we want to do and not enough time to do that thing. So I want to give you fatalities. I don't want them to be garbage. Um, so, <laughs> you know, that, and we also have a lot more purge content coming. We actually have like, um, I think four or five new specialty waves for the purge that are like 95% done, but because they're not completely done, I don't want to give you something broken. So our new layout will really be like kind of a major feature, some content in the next chapter and some like quality of life fixes and updates, then another feature update and then another quality of life and content update. So you'll see content in all four of those releases going forward and every other one will have uh, more major updates to the game. And those four chapters will carry us through our, our ages until yeah, and so the the, the end of time. <laughs> I, I guess the, the then the question there is, yeah. Well, so Age of War will have a fourth chapter then. There will be a fourth chapter of Age of War. Yep, very exciting. So you hear to hear, folks. Uh, uh, be on the lookout for chapter four. Uh, we'll be um, we'll have more details like about that in the coming weeks and months, as well as a, a letter from our producer talking about uh, kind of like the high level stuff uh, regarding like the this kind of thing. So keep an eye on our social media channels uh, in the coming weeks uh, as we approach the holidays and the launch of chapter three. Uh, one other thing too, just before it gets lost in the the in chat here, a couple people have asked what fatalities are. So, if anyone is an AOC player, going back to more older Funcom games, they'll be similar to the AOC fatalities, where when someone dies, they enter sort of a stunned state, and whenever they're in that state, you can attack them with like a light attack, and it'll instead of doing the light attack, perform a fatality and you know, other like dismember or otherwise disembowel or eviscerate or, or, you know, it'll kill them in a very colorful way. And then you'll get a benefit for doing that. So you'll deal some more damage, get some stamina and some health back and you can continue slaying. Do we ever have, oh, uh, well, some some astute exiles are also mentioned talking about uh, <laughs> uh, down but not. Yeah, down but not, not out. And for the 
uninitiated down but not out is a system where when your follower reaches no health they have died essentially and instead of dying they go into a down state where you can help them back up and they get some of their life back and they can fight again that's also on a roadmap for things that will begin releasing i do not believe that as an age of war chapter four release it might be in a third age uh, release. I'm not 100% positive, but it is still on our roadmap. I still want it there. I think that the frustration of losing followers, especially to things outside of your control, is too high to not have it. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, that, uh, there will be another age after Age of War. Uh, and they, uh, I saw someone in chat ask again. So again, uh, what? <laughs> Jeremy's in chat. Oh, lol. Making dad jokes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, so yeah, chapter Age of War Chapter 3, what we're previewing today, uh, will be officially launched on all platforms. Uh, the targeted date is December 14th, and it is currently available to be tested on public test, or public beta, uh, right now. Uh, only on PC, though. So if, you, if you're if you on Steam, again, just uh, download the Conan Exiles public beta client, update it, and you can play uh, some of the Chapter 3 stuff right now. Cool. Okay. That was Someone a... keeps saying give Darfari more content, but... Like we literally have that armor set. We have so much. So yeah, well, uh, I guess that's picked it. Oh, that's different. I'm just gonna I'm gonna swap back just really quick too. Uh, and so that brings us. Uh, we're we're running over a little bit for the hour, so I just wanted to go over a few housekeeping and community notes uh, before we start exiting or before we before we bid you adieu, so you can go play and test. Uh, so again, yeah, there's going to be a little giveaway uh, coming up, I uh, believe today. It's a, yeah, very, very tiny giveaway. What, so uh, 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 Nicole, what are we, what are we doing? What are we doing? Oops. Oh, we had You're a Yog sorry. okay. Sorry, we had a Yogtober contest, and the winners got um, a couple really cool items, including a DLC of their choice. Uh, one of the winners has graciously decided to give it away, and they said, "Hey, you have a stream coming up. I'd like to give it away to um, chat." So. We'll run a little giveaway. Literally, just just it's just one DLC. I, I would do more if I could. But um, shout out to Jalastus. That's uh, who is giving it away. Cool. So, Thank you for that. Yeah. So um, I guess do you do you want to do it now or later? We can just. I mean, we can we can run the thing. Like how um, get those do, tickets going. Yeah. Like, can you explain like how players or you know, how viewers? Yeah. Can, do you just can need enter? a chat and find in the Twitch or or YouTube? Just say something and you'll be entered. Yeah. Through. And so, and both Twitch and YouTube are eligible for yeah. this. Okay. Cool. Exclamation awesome. point lore. Oh my god. The legend. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And so, yeah, uh, for, for those of you watching also uh, at home who, who uh, yeah, October was a. Um, uh, last year we did a uh, uh, like a building contest titled Yachttober. This year we did another Yachttober, uh, another contest titled Re Revenge of Yachttober. Uh, this time was a spooky screenshot contest, and so um, we had a number of uh, entries coming. We chose a screenshot contest because that way also like console players can get involved, and, and it's a lot easier for them. And screenshots are a lot simpler to just like take than yeah. you know original art or, or anything like that. And it doesn't have to be a building or anything like that either. Did you want to show? I will. Them? Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're Wait fine. You're fine. I know. I'm on top of things for once. It's crazy. <laughs> it's weird, right? What the? So here are. Uh, oops. You can kind of. Hello. I didn't. I didn't resize these perfectly, but you can kind of see us in the corner here. I should have moved these over. But yeah. So this is a slideshow of the various entries that we got. Uh, the, these are all the winners in no particular order across the three platform or across four different categories: unmodded, modded, Xbox, and PlayStation. Um, unmodded Amada being on PC, sorry. The composition in some of these was actually so good. <laughs> Oops. Yes. I, need I actually to. remember Oops. being, like, when we we vote on them internally, and I remember being able to vote and being happy that I got to pick ones that all had good composition. Aww. <laughs> all right. Congratulations. I love this one. Yeah, this one's really the nice. The Midsommar. I really like the... Um, what is it? The the looks like a carnival cart of sorts. I don't That's, know if that one made it into the finals, but I remember it that made was one. Honorable of, mentions. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, thanks thanks so much to all the uh, entrants and for and congrats to all the winners of uh, the October screenshot contest as well. Apparently, the bar patrons are crying in the back right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you just hear you? We're just hearing like people crying in the back, or yeah. that's funny. I mean, yeah, that's what you did. It's, it's a realistic tavern. It's, you go there, you go there to drown your sorrows. You know, that's what you do. Oh, <laughs> I made myself sad. 
Okay, I'm gonna go switch back to this now. <laughs> uh, and then also, yeah, actually I wanted to, uh, I lied, I wanted to go back to the game display. Uh, I wanted to show those pictures, uh, the, the yeah, those paintings off again. So again, uh, these are, uh, the, the chapter three update also features uh, picture frames featuring uh, original fan art uh, from our three winners of the Mystic Masterpieces contest. I, again, they don't have proper artist uh, attribution and we apologize for that, but at least the art is in uh, and we're, 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 in, we're in the process right now of contacting the winners again to just confirm details. And uh, we, have, we have to like send it through like localization and all that. So uh, unfortunately. Oh, there's the other one. Hold on, there's one more. Mm -hmm. There's one, one too. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I couldn't there find it. There it is. There it is. Yeah. And so, um, you know, to, to make them fit within the game world, like they, they underwent like some minor changes, mostly to just like add like a like a linen texture. Sorry to, to uh, make it look like it actually like feels like it's within the world and doesn't really like take you out of it. But that, those are the only changes that we made. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, these are the, these three winners are under um, the, it's just called Mystic Masterpieces Collection. Again, it's available for everyone. It's just uh, it's just a feat that you can learn for free. There's no paywall or anything like that. So, again, congrats to the winners and thank you for for your submissions. All right, I'm gonna roll it. Okay. Just uh, yeah, it's just one winner, so uh, it's out of like hundreds of people. So good luck. Good luck. Ooh, I hope I win. I've been talking in chat. Ooh, yeah. I hope <laughs> uh, I win. Congrats, two four X. I'll DM you. Uh, alas, rats. Um, and then uh, I have a couple shout outs. We had um, one of our developers here had a specific request for someone who helped us out a bunch with uh, with just like sending us a bunch of information on uh, just like kind of serious issues that were going on within the game. And so we uh, we'd like to give a quick shout out to Lyft, uh, L-I-F-F-E-D, uh, for, for your amazing info. Thank you so much, uh, as well as uh, couple other folks that have been helping us out with uh, uh, identifying some critical issues. So thanks, thanks for the help and thanks for the shout out there. Thanks for the call out there, Vibior. I appreciate it. And then once, the, uh, once all the giveaway stuff is finished up and we get the person, the, the winner, their goods, uh, there's one other fun little thing that we wanted to show before uh, we head out and, and wish you all an excellent uh, rest of the day and week. Um, but before we move into that, do we have any closing comments or anything like that. And we'll try to, again, we'll try to answer your questions as best we can on the forum. So right now uh, we are kind of running out of time and so we, we don't have a ton of time to answer too many more questions. Um, but anything that you'd like to close us out with? That's it for me. I'm just super excited. Um, I cannot wait for the stuff that we can do with the new tools that we have. And I hope everyone has fun making sweet taverns and smashing walls. Yeah, it'll be fun. Uh, and then, oh, and then, yeah, just uh, I saw someone talk about, like, bizarre stuff, too. There'll be a new, um, I think there's actually, blah, 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 blah. there's a, I think there was a rotation, a bizarre rotation today, and some new, uh, some new returning bundles are actually back. So I think, like, one of the returning bundles is, like, the Nemedian bookcase or, or library bundle, and then, uh, a couple other uh, returning bundles, but back back out of the vault uh, from from the age of sorcery. So uh, things are actually coming back, which is exciting. And uh, stay tuned for more. Okay, uh, I think that's about it as far as like this preview goes. Uh, what we wanted to close out with was just a fun project that we've been working on internally. Just uh, it doesn't have anything to do necessarily with chapter three stuff, but it, it, it's it's a fun creative project that we've been working on. Uh, it's it's like a little little Planet Earth themed documentary. Uh, that will we can just roll in just a bit. Uh, so I'm actually going to do that right now. We'll be back in just a second. Uh, here it is, Hyborian Discoveries. The exiled land is a harsh and dangerous place, and the vast desert area in the south the broken highway is no exception. Here you won't find much between the dunes of sand and forgotten ruins, besides rock and the occasional bush. But soon, dunes turn to jagged crags, pools of glittering water, and patches of lush greenery. It is in these patches that a mother shaleback builds and protects her nest. 
Aggressive in nature, she will do whatever it takes to protect her eggs. A nearby imp takes a chance. The mother comes out victorious and prepares for whatever else may come. The imps retreat into a nearby cave, Hanuman's grotto, giving shelter and safety to these once human and now deformed creatures. Twisted with corruption, they are unaware and indifferent to the beautiful crystals that adorn the cave walls and paths. Dive deep enough through the caverns, and there sits Hanuman the Ape God, palms faced up and awaiting offerings. The demonic imps and the towering shalebacks are as deadly as they come. However, there are others who claim the most kills in the river. The mighty sharp-toothed crocodile, blending into the brown and green of the land, they have ambushed many unsuspecting travelers. And yet, even they cannot match the giant crocodile. Their name says it all. Exiled travelers, take heed. Three times the size of common crocodiles, this monster sports long sharp teeth, a spiked tail, and jaws long enough to swallow an exile whole. With an abundance of water in such an arid climate, many peaceful creatures make their homes here, including rabbits and multitude of colorful fish swimming beneath the surface. Only an experienced hunter We'll know how to capture and kill these wild animals to make a meal and put the ever-persistent beast of hunger to sleep until it wakes up again. Though staving hunger and thirst isn't the only threat to those condemned here, quickly learning that to kill means to survive, those that made it this far can be extremely hostile to others around them. Here we see a Nordheimer, fresh from the desert and determined to make it through another day. He scans the camp, hoping to find something useful, before jumping into action and taking the two campers by surprise. Victory, but only by an inch. The Nordheimer celebrates his win, but even the hard-earned victory does not guarantee his safety. He needs to search for shelter. Quick-moving and turbulent, this imposing sandstorm blots out the sun and anything caught within it. Grains of sand picked up by the wind tears everything in its path to shreds in minutes. Without shelter or the proper equipment, death is inevitable. The dark of night shrouds the oasis, as bonfires from various camps spark and give light. Skulker's End is home to arguably one of the most dangerous tribes in this area of the oasis. Those who accidentally wander onto Darfari land are unlikely to leave and may instead find themselves on the dinner menu. By intent or coincidence, these cannibals guard the entrance to a dark and foreboding underground sewer, the Dregs. Many have tried, and many have failed, to defeat the Abyssal Remnant, a giant serpent resting in a pool of acid. 
The desert, oasis, and mighty bluffs within it are full of wonder and secrets hidden in every corner. Join us next time when we explore and uncover more of the mysteries within the exiled lands. Back. All right. Well, Where? hope hope y'all uh, hope y'all enjoyed the first installment of uh, of Hyborian Discoveries. Uh, we had a lot of fun, kind of working on that. Uh, it's it's uh, it, it's it's been made over quite a while. Uh, no no like special like Unreal Engine whatever's just pure raw capture from a gamepad and in game. And uh, <laughs> uh, shout outs to the voice actor. Um, voice of Kazath. Kazath, yes, yeah. uh, 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 just a one, just a wonderful person. Uh, incredibly fast turnaround time on the script. Uh, top, top notch, top notch hire. So thank you for that. I think there are mods for the mating of Wild Exiles, but that's not in the base game. Mm. Yeah, we were just doing like pure, it was like a pure vanilla client and all that stuff. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So uh, that about wraps it up for today. Uh, uh, a quick shout out to. So uh, I, I know I know a lot of folks over on YouTube are leaving some passionate uh, questions. We are aware of all that kind of stuff. Uh, we are working on fixing uh, 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 bases and all that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah. So we're going to be uh, saying our goodbyes. Uh, wait, you are now on screen, but there you are. That's hey. it's Nicole. Hi. Hooray! Hi. Hi. So yeah, um, thank you again uh, from all of us here uh, at Funcom in North Carolina. Uh, thanks for tuning in today for a Chapter 3 dev stream. Uh, again, public beta is now available for Chapter 3. Go to your Steam library, download the public test client, leave your feedback on the forums. Uh, official launch, December 14th. Stay tuned for more. Yay. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Bye! Bye. Bye. Bye.